Today we are joined by the lovely Millie, who went through the Thrive Programme for Emetophobia five years ago now, in 2018, and did a testimonial video for us at the time. And she's here to give us an update, which we're all really excited about. Now, I've never met Millie before. She went through with the lovely Fiona Brown. Um, so I'm just as eager to hear all about Millie's story and what she's been up to since overcoming her emetophobia. Is that all right, Millie? Absolutely. <laughs> so do you want to put us in the picture, Millie? What was life like for you as an emetophobe? Um, so in one word, miserable. Mm. Like stressful, miserable, exhausting. Um, because I don't think people understand, like non-emetophobes, how exhausting it is. Mm. Like mm. it was 24 seven, like my brain was full of just like, oh my God, am I gonna be sick? Like, why does my tummy hurt? Like, where's the closest bin? What am I, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. And like, it was exhausting. Yes. Um, it was, wow, it was, I think like quite lonely because I would yeah. tell my friends about it, be like, oh, I've got this really like strange thing going on. Like I'm just really scared of being sick. And it always, 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 I don't know whether you found this, people be like, oh, no one really likes it. Oh yeah, yeah, standard response. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so, it made, you, it made me feel so small and like, oh my God, it yeah. must be crazy. Yes. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think even down to my parents were like, why are you so, yeah. what even? Yes. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, you guys, please, come on. <laughs> like, and you can't, deal. you can't articulate, can you? I found this, you just can't articulate the level of busyness in your head and the level of fear, mm. continuous fear that you were in. Articulating that to someone is extremely hard because for someone who doesn't have that fear, they don't, they don't understand. Exactly. <laughs> how, and it's, how busy your head is. It's a fear that you can't, like, it's, for example, if you're, if you're scared of dogs, don't go near a dog you're scared of flying uh, don't fly yes. you're scared of like a bodily function yeah 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 that you have no control over yeah exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah so what did you kind of what kind of things did you used to do because what's sometimes helpful for people listening to the podcasts um who have a metaphobia or believe they've got a metaphobia because a lot of people obviously don't speak about it and it's something that's quite private to them because of social anxiety as we know um and they go, oh gosh, they're like me. They do the things that I do so they can relate. So what kind of things did you get up to when you were in a metaphobe? <laughs> um, thinking back on it, like, what didn't I do? I, <laughs> I had like a full on like list in my head of like, okay, I must do this or I'll not be yeah. sick. And if this, yeah. I wouldn't be sick, it's fine. Yes. For yes. example, I think it was on my testimonial video as well. There are so many and I'm like, I don't do it anymore. You did. <laughs> but um, so I think like one of my main ones was not drinking alcohol. Well, it's uh, it, it becomes your new normal not to do those things. Mm. So I find it really bizarre when people ask me, well, do you never have those thoughts anymore? Well, I'm like, well, no, not really, because it's not what I normally do. And when I do have those thoughts, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb and I go, oh, that's not a metaphobic thought. Yeah, Bless me. Stuff like I've not and felt you... that in a long time. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can move past it really, really quickly. It's really um, hard to picture yourself now doing those things, but you have a memory of doing them. So you remember oh. doing them very clearly and you remember the feelings, but because you don't feel that way anymore, you're thinking, why would I do that? And that's, yeah. it's like a real contradiction, isn't it? It's kind of like looking back on yourself and being like, whoa like yeah that, was that me like yes. did I do that it's yeah it's kind of like seeing an old version of yourself and being like whoa yeah. we've like seriously get up here yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so I love it so in your testimonial video yeah little post-it notes which were great and you were saying I don't do that anymore and I don't do that anymore <laughs> and what you did mention is that you were traveling mm. you traveled and you were eating different food including seafood and obviously alcohol, which we've alluded to. So I just wanted to know in the last five years, where have you got to with all of that? Are we still doing all those things? Have we so, done more? I have had the travel bug. I, yes. well, own like short distance because it's expensive. Um, it is. So <laughs> I've been to so many places and some of them have been so spontaneous. My friend called me on a Sunday and said, let's go to Ibiza. And I said, I okay, let's go. So Tuesday morning, I was on a flight to Ibiza. Um, 
one of those kind of random things. I was in Amsterdam at the end of nice. October, so like Happens. around a month ago, mm-hmm. and we got stuck on the Eurostar. Ah. Um, because they chucked us off, everyone off at Brussels, and my friend was like panicking. She's like, how are we going to get there? What's going on? And that's just me, cool as a cucumber, like, it's all right. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. fine. <laughs> we'll get there. And she's now explain like, why. Explain why you were cool as cool a cucumber and your friend wasn't. Explain explain that because people watching this as well will be going, Well, I'm getting over my metaphobia. That's it, full stop. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? So it's I think both your desire for control and your sense of power and control yes. over events, everything. Um, yeah. because you can't stop, you can't make the train not I had no control over this train. Nope. Nope. And this train just stopped not going any further. Yep. We got no info. It was completely out of our control. But what we could control, what I could control, was the reaction. So yes. this train has stopped. Right. I can cry. I can yep. panic. Or I can think, fine, let's, let's get to Amsterdam. Like, I want to yeah. go on holiday. Like, I let's make the most of this. <laughs> yeah, like surveying the little things I can control. Like, okay, so what's next? What can I do now? Yeah. How can I make this happen? Yeah. Um, whereas my friend was pure panicking. Love her. Yeah. Yes. Great friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the yeah. most helpful. No, but that's, that's one of the things that is a byproduct I would call it, of the emetophobia free program. Because when you are an emetophobe, I was the same. I didn't, I couldn't care less whether I was going to be able to handle that in the future, if it was a train or what. I don't care. I just want to get over my emetophobia. That mm. was how I felt. I don't care about anything else. But actually going through it, you realise that because you are learning to thrive, you therefore stop creating a metaphobia. But because you're thriving, every area of your life gets better. Exactly. Every single area. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I I was thinking on the on the way back from work, I was like thinking how much it resonates when mm. Fiona said something to me. She was like, It's not the being sick, it's the control over it. And I was like, Wow. <laughs> because like I don't even think of emetophobia anymore no. as as fear of sick. I yeah. I see it in such like a broader thrive horizon kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Of yeah. like a metaphobia is this little part, yeah. but since overcoming that, it like springboards you off to everything else. Like yeah. social anxiety, what is that? Like yes. low self esteem, what is that? Like yeah, it's it's like tenfold sort of thing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's all so encompassing, isn't it? Mm. It's an all encompassing program, so it's it doesn't just you can't just focus on your metaphobia because your metaphobia is a symptom of all the things you've just mentioned of your low self-esteem mm. of that bit of social anxiety of your beliefs your limiting beliefs and your thinking styles it's a symptom of all of those things so you have to tackle all of those things but once you increase your self-esteem definitely you feel miles better once you lower your social anxiety you feel miles better so you know rising tide raises all ships you feel it all areas of your life gets better so happily travel in the world mm. within a reasonable distance to home yeah. <laughs> um, i love it God, there's been like eating different foods i had <clears throat> hake and then afterwards i was like wait a minute yeah. that wouldn't have happened five years ago what yeah and i was having this really like fulfilled moment of like yes. kind of realization or remembrance yeah. it was sort of happiness but then a yes. real wow pride yeah. proud yeah. moment of like yeah. that's incredible and gratitude to your older self mm. gratitude to your past self for getting yourself over it and putting the effort in and putting the work in to get over it yeah. i had a similar experience last week as i was trotting around aldi with me trolley and i saw there was smoked haddock and i thought oh, and i used to call it yellow fish when i was a kid like little um i remember my mum said we used to have yellow fish i mean five six ish age and i was like yellow fish i remember thinking yay yellow fish i couldn't remember what it tasted like because it was that long ago mm. but i remember thinking yay yellow fish i thought let's go yay yellow fish so we did it was lovely yeah. it stinks the house out it was really time. nice <laughs> and that it's was only a couple so of weeks good. ago it's so strange how like you can now just like five years ago i would not have imagined never anything mm. like this and now i'm nope. like whoa yes yeah yeah God, it's, it's like lovely. those little moments every time i'm like wow Yes. But I won't think yes. about it in the moment. That's just no. 
Okay, okay. I've got some fish. Nice. That looks Absolutely. good on the menu. Yeah. But then I think, wait a minute. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> yeah. it's like a delayed reaction kind of thing. It's incredible. Yeah. It's because you're in a habit of thinking in such a thrivey way all of the time mm. that these little things pop up, you deal with them. And it's only when you reflect back and you go, oh, yeah. So that was a, a, another example. That I thought at the time, oh, I should have, I should have taken a picture of that. I even said to my friends at the time after we'd eaten it, I should have taken a picture of that. We went to a baby shower at the weekend, nice, and it was lovely. And we got brought out. Um, obviously, I didn't know what we were eating. I knew there was food, but I had no idea what it was. And it was um, what they called little finger sandwiches, tea, afternoon tea, afternoon mm. tea. But it was like um, a fancy one, and it all came out. And there was like smoked salmon and egg on some of them, and. Um, there was like sausage roll things and pork pies and whatever else and I would have been my metaphobia days one either not have gone two not mm. have eaten or three made sure I've ordered ex- knew exactly what was on the menu and ordered the vegetarian option yeah that would have been my go-to and it came out and I had I literally had the emetophobia thought of oh I didn't order the veggie option and I thought why would I need to do that before yeah. I talked into everything that was exactly. on there and enjoyed the pork pie um but then then it's reflecting back and going yeah <laughs> exactly it's a little right. food kind of moment yeah. that's yeah. when you were mentioning the food I was like wow an emetophobe's dream <laughs> yes yeah Fish, all that eggs yeah. <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> oh chicken coronation chicken that was there as well oh was yeah yeah but it, it was genuinely delicious it was lovely mm. um so I think I think what I want to say as well at this point is that doesn't just happen so because we are thriving now it's a doing thing it's something that we do every day and it's something that I practice every day. It's not effortful. It doesn't it doesn't consume my thoughts and my mind. I love it because I'm loving my life and I'm going through my life enjoying what I'm doing. Mm. But I do consciously make the decision to thrive every day. Is that yeah. still the same for you? Yeah. Yeah, I think I find myself sort of, con- like I'm conscious of it. It comes, yeah. I want to say 70% naturally, 30% yes. I'm like, oh like yeah don't just just think like if you did this maybe this would be good yeah um it's like making little decisions in your mind that yes yeah like I was there was one time when I was getting some feedback at work and I'd only just started and it was not great feedback it was like you could improve on this you can improve on this 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 was right but this was kind of improve that and I was like right I have two options here I can cry and I, yeah. it was a strong contender <laughs> or I can take it on the chin and Im- improve myself from it yeah um obviously chose the latter and like yes. in in that moment I was like wow yes. I didn't just cry and let myself be absorbed by all this overwhelming emotion I just sort of thought okay yeah fine yeah. let's react yeah. in a positive way let's react yeah. in a helpful way helpful rather than way, sort of yeah. catastrophizing oh my gosh I'm dreadful at my job I've been there a week like yeah. you're not going to be brilliant at everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it was like sort of deciding. Okay, let's not react yet. Yeah, take a little minute. Okay, let's do the helpful thing. Let's just yes. forget that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like yeah, definitely like a. I would. It's like you said. It's not something you have to make effort with. No. It's like a. It's a. I was going to say a conscious effort, a conscious decision you make. That's but it. But it yes. it's not yes. like it's not tiring. It's not. No. It's no. no effort. It's almost no. second nature with a kick, I'd yes, say. Yes, absolutely. And that's so hard, I think, for someone suffering with a metaphobia to understand because your head is so busy, as we talked about right at the beginning. Your head's so full all of the time. You're battling constantly, daily, um, with all of your thoughts and trying to manage them. So feeling like a decision like that takes conscious effort and everything else doesn't seems bizarre doesn't it (laughs) it seems like almost I hear it a lot too good to be true it's too good to be true um which well it's not because we're both sat here right but it does take effort at the beginning so Mm. do you want to talk about your journey through the program what that felt like yeah I like hands up I will admit I was like really like it does seem too good to be true yeah um but like obviously at the beginning I was going in sort of I don't want to say almost a bit pessimistic like I I sort of had this I why would it work for me like I've got really bad emetophobia like these people might just be like 
you know. But yeah. I was like, well, I'm not special, am I? It's just a metaphobia. Like, <laughs> we've all got it. And if they can get over it, then why shouldn't I sort of thing? Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, I think it was it was a lot of information and it was mm-hmm. really like, it was a lot to take on, but it was mm-hmm. once again where I did, I went through it with Fiona and she put it across in such a simple way where everything was sort of understandable. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a moment maybe two or three weeks in when I had like, I'm going to call it a mini Eureka moment. Yeah. Everything sort of like, I was like, wow, okay. And I sort yeah. of started seeing little little yeah. bits little bits of bits of progress um, yeah progress. what was your eureka moment out of interest what was that um honestly i can't remember because it is oh, right. <laughs> such a minuscule thing now that like back at the time i was like whoa oh. but um i think it could have been like the it's not being sick it's the mm-hmm. desire for control around it yeah, yeah, yeah i think yeah. that's something that stuck with me to be fair um yeah. but then obviously throughout the program i was blips and dips and like it was it was sometimes I was like, yeah, I'm doing really well. And sometimes where I was obviously still quite metaphobic going through, yeah. um, there would be like moments of a catastrophe. I'd be like, I'm the worst at Thrive. I'll never do it sort of thing. And then it's like, wait, what? why am I being such a drama queen? <laughs> like there were definitely like ups and down moments. But yeah. now when I look back, I'm like, whoa girl why were you being so dramatic um but it was like it was such a it was difficult and you had to put in I had to put in a lot of effort to like yeah 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 yeah. in in the part I think there's a part in the book where it says write down like I guess habits and rituals sort of things you have yes yeah 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 and then it says go through and cross them off and I found it so rewarding but so difficult and it's sort of finding is, this is a sort of quote I've come up with recently yeah. and it's finding comfort in the discomfort yes so yes. it's this is really uncomfortable but this has got to be normal somehow so just yeah find yeah. comfort in it yeah. and it was like first bit of alcohol I was drinking I was like I don't feel great but yeah. it's fine <laughs> or like eating good. fish like I'm not having a good time yeah but long yeah. distance goals sort of thing and it's absolutely like, yes it's definitely more of a marathon than a sprint yes yes, yes. it's absolutely. like a slow burner you can't yes i think yes. it's something you can't rush yes you have to sort of absolutely. take it as it comes yeah um, and i think the the list that you were referring to there of writing down all of your safety seeking avoidance papers crossing them off mm. you perfect your, if you have a strong perfectionist thinking style which metaphobes tend to have. God, yeah. Um, and I certainly did. <laughs> I was like, well, how many times do I have to do that before I can cross that off? And I want to be able to do that with no anxiety whatsoever before I cross it off. So <laughs> it was very much, it's moving your goalpost, right? Because right at the start, and I see this with clients now, right at the start of the program, you sort of go, I just I just love to be able to eat fish. I just, I just want to eat fish, right? So then you go through the program and then you eat some fish and you go, yeah, but I was really anxious and I only had a little bit. And then you add some, so a little bit more next time you go, yeah, but I still didn't eat the whole fish and I was still feeling really anxious. You know? And you, every time you just move the goalpost, move it and move it and move it. Um, so it's a, it's getting that thinking style under control as well, isn't it? And going, actually, your goal was to eat fish. So you've yeah, eaten it. It's that sort of self You're doing really well. Thing. Well it's done, like, yes. I've, yeah. I've eaten it, but it doesn't really count, right? Because my self-esteem is <laughs> so yeah. low. Like, yes. surely yeah. I don't, I can't, I don't count. But it's like, That's it. celebrate the little goals. That's it, yes. Because they might, like, looking back, I'm like, wow, that was a really big deal. Big deal, Like, I yeah. didn't give myself enough credit for that. Yes, yes, Like, at one yes. point, that was unimaginable. Mm. And, like, yeah. obviously in that point, I was like, oh, God. Like, yeah, this is hard, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But then, like, yeah. it's the, the feeling afterwards when you're like, wow. Like, yes. that, was in, that was really incredible. And, like, yeah. patting yourself on the back kind of thing, like, you yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Mm. So I think a question that might be on a lot of people's minds um, is when they see testimonial videos, they tend to be from people who've just finished the programme and they're going, it's amazing and I'm metaphobia free. And they wonder and they go, yeah, but you've not been sick yet. Uh. So have you been sick since, Millie? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have. <laughs> Um, to be honest, most of them 
have been alcohol induced. Right. I don't know if that's a good thing to say or not. Um, <laughs> well, it's great was, because that's clearly you're over your metaphobia, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, there was, I had one really strong bout of flu when I was in Italy, actually. So right. I was living in Italy, had this awful flu and I was like profusely sick and had to fly mm. the next day. Mm. So it was, it was all of this kind of like, wow, I need to thrive hard now. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. Managed Here's where the effort back. comes in. <laughs> yeah, it was like, we've been preparing for this. <laughs> Um, and it was sort of like all of my chickens coming home to roost. I was like, okay, mm. we've got to do it. Um, so that was a really good, good thrive moment. Um, yes. There have yeah. been many. And there have been yes. even like the other night. Um, it was it was an interesting one. Yeah. So it was an alcohol fueled night. Yeah. Then obviously that night wasn't very well. Um, yeah. Then the night after I hadn't eaten much because my stomach was quite delicate, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I think it was a tuna sandwich or something, a huge, mm-hmm. massive, cheesy roll tuna thing. Nice. And then the night I just sort of woke up and was like, oh, oh. something's <laughs> not right. <laughs> and before I could even do anything in my slumber, my slumber state, state, yes. slumbery yes. state, state, I was really tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just sort of came up and I was like, okay, not much I can really, no, that it's happened. happening. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like... <laughs> That it's so strange how it's such a not a big deal that yeah. I've seen sort of the other side of it yeah. that yeah. before when I so when I was a child I have this strong well we know that memories are mm. sort of mm. what you believe to be true and the rest yeah. of this kind of yeah yeah um yeah. and I have this let's call it memory yeah or whatever yeah. of yeah. when I was young and. I had a sickness bug or something mm-hmm. and my dad was sitting with me and I think this definitely, 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 definitely fueled some yeah. metaphobia, maybe like learned behaviours from my parents. He was sitting with me and then I vomited and he was like stamping on the floor like, mom, mom, quick, she's being sick, like creating this massive, yes, massive drama. panic. Yeah. And like now the other side of the Thrive programme is so far on. Yeah. I'm like, Wow. It was a, it, they created a big deal for them. So maybe yes. there's like a motorphobia in the background. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, yes. And at the time yeah. I was like, oh my God, they're stamping around this. Whoa, it must be so scary. Just, yeah, it must be terrifying. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, I threw up last night. Yeah. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> like, God, gotta, gotta clean, clean the carpet. What's the worst? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of waking up to an aroma of it. It's, it's not it's a big beautiful. deal. It's nice no. to have you when you're done. It's really, <laughs> it's wild. It is, it is. Mm. So on that then, um, obviously because you created a metaphobia, because you had all of those safety seeking behaviours and if you want to, I'll put your testimony video link underneath this so you can yeah. people can watch the original one which would be really cool after this <clears throat> you can see how you reacted to it and all your safety seeking avoid it so you said don't do that anymore etc how do you feel now so obviously as an emetophobe you know the panic yeah. you know the absolute dread you know the fear and the shakes and the shivers and the everything else that you get with it what do you do now what's your reaction to it now so like before it was it was awful well I always say awful that's before it was quite bad yeah. um as in if I like if my stomach felt even like a tiny bit strange I'd be like yeah. oh my god like yeah. help or yes. if someone said oh I've got a bit of a yes. bad stomach like my stomach feels kind of strange I'd be yeah. like yeah I can't be in the same I'm, room I'm as leaving. you yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. um but now it's more of like okay so what can I do to help this like yes my stomach yeah. doesn't feel so great I feel a little bit sick maybe like yeah drink some water, have a sit down, yep. see what happens. Because yep. I think at the end of the day, it's, as an ex looking back on it, it's like, it's not a big deal. It's a bodily yeah. function. It's like yeah. being, booing, puking. The yes. three Ps. Yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> it's, I've never thought about it like that, really, but I like it. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's, now I, do, I don't really, it's strange. There's, obviously it's not, it's not the nicest feeling. No, um, no, but no, it's no. it's bearable. It's tolerable. It's yeah. it's never going to be fun. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah. I'm bored. Might just be sick. Yeah. Um. It's not like no. 
like I'm just gonna go draw a picture I'm just gonna be it's not a hobby yeah no not something no, I look no. forward to doing but yeah. it's it's tolerable it's yes it's yeah. copable yeah copable withable it's, it's something you can cope with yeah yeah um, <laughs> it's yeah it's not it's not nearly as big a deal as um no. as it was in the past yes absolutely um, yeah. and it sounds very strange that mm-hmm. before with like when you sort of stop or do how can I say with the safety um like safety seeking things that I used to do when I would not do one it was a little bit of little bit of clap yeah and with if I am sick it's almost like a weird sense of relief a sense of wow I coped yes like wow I didn't create a panic of five years ago sort of thing yes 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 Um, yes yes yes. so in a weird way it's discomfort but it's finding this alter ego of like the opposite so you've got discomfort it's not not particularly pleasant but it happens versus wow yes in my childhood even up to five years ago I would have been crying my eyes out screaming panicking yeah 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 yeah, and I was just like oh yes (laughs) it's incredible (laughs) It is. It is. I find um, that it's it's more temporary. That's why I I obviously I don't create the panic and I don't do everything else <clears throat> when I'm mm. sick. But it's much quicker because I found that when I was an emetophobe, the amount of anxiety I created when I did feel sick and I'd go, oh, I've got to lie down. I've got to lie still. I can't move. And I'd lie there and I'd really want a sip of water, but what if I'm sick after the sip of water yes. and I can't do it? And you'd be <gasps> for hours, most of the time resulting in not being sick at all. Mm. Because it was just anxiety, which I didn't understand at the time, but it was. But when I was sick at that point, it had lasted forever because I'd built up such a, a, a panic reaction and such an anxiety around it. Mm. That now, because you don't create that anticipatory anxiety because you're quite calm about it you just think oh, not great you know it's not feeling great okay yeah okay what can I do let me get yourself comfy etc etc yeah it's over much quicker much quicker it's that the experience of it is nowhere near as difficult or as traumatic if you want to call it traumatic yeah because you are so much calmer when you're experiencing it yeah and it starts with that first thought like as an emetophobe it started with like oh my stomach my stomach feels a bit weird yeah all yeah. the way through this yeah however yep. many stages of anxiety and everything <laughs> to like oh lol I wasn't sick yes all yes. of that for nothing kind of thing and now I'm exhausted yeah. and embarrassed yes yes because I've yeah, made yeah, such yeah. a scene and yes. my friends are like oh god are you okay and it's like yeah oh, I just had a bit of a yes. funny tummy yeah <laughs> yeah so like yeah. it's almost this kind of like oh, what mm, yeah it was it's... yeah so so much more temporary now it's like oh yes. like yeah. if I have a bit of a strange stomach it's like oh Oh well, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Whereas before it was a like off the scales. Wow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's so understandable why it's so. Mm. You, you you avoided using the word awful, but when you're in a metaphobe, it is awful. Yeah, <laughs> it is. The experience of it is awful because you create such a dramatic, chaotic experience for yourself. Yeah. Um. Once you learn how to not create that based on you know the decision you were making when that train stopped you went right okay got a decision now I can panic I can cry I can do whatever yeah or I can think about this helpfully when you do that in all areas of life and that's what you practice every day day in day out how do I make the best of this situation whether it's a great one or a tricky one when you're faced with being sick or feeling sick you do the same and you go right okay so I can panic and I can do this and I can do that or what can I do to be helpful? How can I think about it in a rational way? How can I? So that skill set is really helpful. Yeah. And yeah, help, it helps, doesn't it? <laughs> Massively. Definitely. And it's, it's sort of, you can apply it in, in sort of with being sick or anything. And I yes. think that's yeah, what you were anything. saying about it's a byproduct of yeah. the sort of yeah. the thrive thing yeah, with yeah. like, okay, you, you go for emetophobia, but you get this, 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 all as like a little free side gift yeah it is so it's so good and it like doesn't just it's not just a metaphobia you get so much more like background stuff you didn't even sort of think about yes yeah like I thought it must a metaphobia is just sick and that's it that's all I'm coming here for yeah 
and then it's like oh these are all your little building blocks you've got I can't remember the number like 27 building blocks yeah. this is all of yeah. them and yeah. I was like wait what <laughs> <laughs> wow and now I'm like wow yeah my social anxiety is yeah. gone yeah. my yeah. self-esteem is like through the roof like yes. all of these background things that you yeah. didn't really think about yeah, yeah. it's so incredible Definitely. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so is there anything that you want to, five years on, update us on, share with people thinking of going through the programme, share with people who are currently struggling, any words of wisdom from someone who's got over it and absolutely smashed it and is now living life completely emetophobia free and loving life entirely? Uh, it's an interesting one, yes. There are so many things sort of that I would say to my past self even mm-hmm. yeah. that... Yeah just like so if you're thinking about doing the thrive program just do it simple like Mm -hmm. it's hands down the best thing that i did in my life ever um and then i think what i wish i'd said to myself during it was that in the moments when it feels difficult just persevere yes and like reach out to your if you're doing it with a thrive coach you know, yeah. reach out to them. Yeah. Um, because that's what they're there for. That's um, what they're here for. And it's like that the social anxiety of like, oh, but what if they think I'm a failure? Like yeah. my thrive yeah. coach yeah. is yeah. probably yeah. gonna be like, oh, you're so bad. Yes. But not at all. They're literally yeah. this is what they're here for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think like lean lean on the thrive coach as much as you can because yes, yes, yeah. That's the that's why they're that's here. Their job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um and I think what I would have said to myself when I was struggling was just sort of your, the fact that you're even here doing this program is so good. Yes. Like, I think at the beginning I was like, oh, do I, don't I? Like, what if it's just another thing that doesn't work? But the fact you can think about it is a start. Yeah. And there's no sort of, there's no backward steps from starting, if that makes sense. Yeah, Um, absolutely. So yeah, I think just get off the starting block and, what's the worst that's going to happen absolutely and if you can't you know some people can't afford to go through with a coach or they can't do for whatever other reason you can get over it with just the manual you can do it at your home at your own pace i know some people have little kids and lots of them so they haven't got the time and whatever else but you can even going through it really slowly at home on your own you will still get there if you put the effort in, if you apply it, and if you do the activities consistently. It takes consistency, it takes mm. effort, but you will get there. I find it so easy to just flick back to the book. Yeah. And there are so yeah. many, like, useful, well, it's all useful. Um, yeah. And I think if I'm having a moment where I'm like, what would the Thrive book say to do right now? Yes. Um, yeah. And just, like, going back to it, which I thought the sort of first time I thought about it, I was like, well, the Thrive book is only for six weeks that you go Mm -hmm. through with a coach Mm -hmm. in my case and if I use it after the six weeks I must be a failure and it was a strange 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 thing I had in my mind but now like every so often I'll be like oh I wonder what the Thrive has to say on this yes absolutely like it's yeah so such a useful tool to carry with me just like absolutely on the off chance that there is oh something I'm not too sure about yes definitely so it's it's the book the manual allows you to be your own coach so the coaches are there at the beginning if you want to use them obviously you don't have to use them there's plenty of people that have gone through it successfully without but they're there to support and to guide but it's not necessary because you are becoming you're doing the work you're putting the effort in you're mm-hmm. getting yourself over it it wasn't fiona doing it for you and it's not me doing it for the clients i work with it's you putting the effort in we're just encouraging supporting helping mm. so it's there it's a skill set it's a skills-based training program so you get all the skills you'll need to not only thrive in life but get over your metaphobia and you're going to meet different challenges in life along the way okay whether that's new relationships or, or death of a loved one or whatever else it might be there's a challenge you've got those skills that are applicable to all areas of life not just your metaphobia definitely yeah 100 percent fabulous right well we'll leave it there release really. we've done really really well today um thank you so much for coming on it's been lovely to see you thank you so much for sharing your updates um it's great and it's lovely for everybody listening to see somebody who's been through it five years on having a wonderful time having a whale of a time and hopefully in another five years you'll come back and update us again who knows <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be great. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.